Hi. So I just wanted to pop on really quick and let you know that my schedule is changing a bit. I think. I don't know. <laughs> so for that reason, I'm, I'm going to close my books for personal readings for the time being. Um, obviously the people who already have a uh, reading scheduled, nothing changes for you. We will, we will do those readings on those dates and times, but, um, I'm just not going to take any new bookings at least for right now. So obviously I will let you know if that changes. Um, we're talking about May shouts out to you, May babies, um, Taurus and Gemini. I'm a cusper. My birthday is on the 20th. <laughs> So anyway, without further ado, let's get into the reading. We're going to be using um, the Angels and Ancestors Oracle deck. And then um, we're using this tarot deck. <laughs> I need to find the name of it. It doesn't come with a book, which is really annoying to me, but... Um, I'll figure it out. I'll Google it because I have no clue. I got it a couple years ago. So without further ado, um, and obviously because of my schedule, the videos are going to come out probably a bit more sporadically. Um, just an FYI on that too, if you care. But yeah, let's get into it. Hello again. <laughs> All right, let's see. Let's see who's next. Six, three. All right, let me grab. I found, which I think I forgot to do this on the one three video, but I found on uh, Facebook somebody had posted like whatever, like each each line and just like a a little like a sentence or two about them, and. The person, I don't know if they're on Instagram or if they're just on Facebook. I haven't looked for them on Instagram, but it's at blue.moon.readings. That's who I got this from. So shouts out to them. So for the line six, the role model, it says you are the last line. Your third line, like experiences during the first 30 years, have given you invaluable knowledge to shift our energetic reality. You may have a period of isolation only to return to your community restored. You may be per, I wonder it's per V, yeah, I think it's supposed to be perceived as aloof due to your readiness to transition into the new collective way of being. And then for the third line, the martyr line, it says you are here to learn through experience. With trial and error comes great insights. By experimenting through action, you find vital truths along your path. No one can tell you, no one can tell or show your... <laughs> This is kind of what I get like for not, I don't know. It, it says no one can tell or show your sufficiently. You must find out on your own. That's embarrassing a little bit. <gasps> How very third line almost to like not the embarrassing part. The trial and error part. <laughs> No, definitely, you know, not embarrassing. So, I don't even know if that made much sense. And that is a really great lesson for me to, like, proofread things. I mean, you know, I'm like, uh, most of it made sense. I'm not saying that, you know, it's all a complete loss. But, um, anyway... That, that sixth line, being the role model, you know, it was talking about the first 30 years being basically like a 3-3 three, three for your first 30 years. So lots of trial and error, lots of making and breaking bonds, you know, like just having to learn by doing 
And then the second stage after your Saturn return, kind of retreating a little bit, you know, like that's where it was kind of talking about the aloof part, but um, they call it going up on the roof. To be more of an observer, unpack the first 30 years of your life, but you still have that third line that's still going to, you know, it's going to get bored and it's going to need to get its hands dirty. Um, so it's not like you kind of fully get like the rest of that, say like a 6-2 would get while they're on the roof. But um, after the age of, of 50 or so, then you come off of the roof and that's too many cards and um share you know like you're just you're better able to share the experiences that you had and more so even just by being you know it's not like you have to like get up on a stage and be a motivational speaker unless you want to be absolutely you can do that but it's more so like living by being an example like a role model right <laughs> that's funny i what's funny is that like yesterday i in the one three reading i was having such a hard time like finding my words and today it's like they're 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 not i'm not even sure if if it's like the right words are like the right words are not coming out I don't know but anyway we're just gonna roll with it and this says druid hold the space very hermit vibes with this one we'll probably read out of the book but I'm getting the hermit vibe just because there's this like crystal at the top of their staff that is illuminated and you know like on the hermit card they have their uh, lantern that's illuminated by the star and of course I think you know it is generally depicted by like an older gentleman so there's that connection there too we're not taking those because that was operator error that one clearly wanted to come out ten of cups absolutely love the enthusiasm behind the ten of cups we have the emperor that's too many cards we have the hanged man the ace of swords these cards are going wild too like no judgment I love the enthusiasm Six of Cups. And <laughs> holy crap. The Nine of Cups. Three of Wands, a Chariot, Four of Pentacles, Ace of Wands. <sighs> Beautiful. Okay, let's see what Druid, Druid have. have you can look at the card I will read from the book. It says, hold things together. Don't make any sudden moves or cha changes. Stand strong knowing you are where you are supposed to be. The Druids were the ancient wise ones of the British Isles. They had a deep connection to the earth, the sun, and the moon. They were the scholars who created the... Ogum tree language. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. And they were known for their creative skills in storytelling, poetry, and craftsmanship. When a, when the Druid card appears in a reading, you're being guided to dig deep within and hold your station. If you're wondering what to do next or have a sense of anxiety about what is unfolding in your life, it's time to shift your perceptions and move back to a state of trust. Don't change your plans or do anything drastic. Just trust the process and let everything happen as it needs to before taking any more steps. Think of a tree. It has strong roots yet continues to grow and bear fruit. 
your life will be a reflection of this. I kind of love that because also we have this emperor card in the middle and it's literally this tree that's growing out of a brain <laughs> and the roots are coming out of the bottom of it and it's like smack dab in the middle of the reading too. <laughs> so very interesting. We start with the Ten of Cups. And, you know, the Ten of Cups is like the minor arcana card to the Sun card. It's like everything good. You know, Cups having to do with our emotions, how do we feel about ourselves, how do we feel about our lives, how do we feel about what we're doing, how do we feel about the people around us, our community, our family chosen or biological, you know, our coworkers, our work, our peers. And when we get to the 10, it's, you know, it's a completion. So there is this level of satisfaction, fulfillment, purposefulness. <laughs> and also, you know, these, all these glasses are stacked up, right? I mean, there's obviously 10 cups in there. And it's like, there might just be like multiple layers of your life that either have come together or they are and will be coming together. Like just kind of perfectly fitting together like like a jigsaw puzzle is how that feels but you know, I mean it's not leaning right so there there is this like sturdy kind of feeling about it and it's paired with the ace of swords aces are new beginnings I mean you know tens break down to a one also and tens also like tend to usher in something new because again it is a completion. So we go back to the ace. So that's kind of interesting too. But swords have to do with our minds, our perceptions of realities. It's truth too, but it's like divine truth, objective, you know, truth. And it's also ego because... That's generally where we hear our ego is in our minds and our ego is created by the stories that we attach to experiences, whether they're true or not, and whether they were our stories or not, you know? So with the Ace of Swords, there is a, there's either a new idea a new, like a, a shift in perspective. It could even be that your your idea of what your Ten of Cups looks like is shifting. And even like this, this the, the card was saying, it's like there's really nothing that, uh, nothing on this table is saying <laughs> that there needs to be any movement until like basically the three of wands at the bottom of the deck. So I also, I just, I love the synergy between the, what this card, what the Druid card means and what is also on the table because, you know, it is almost like hold the space, like allow this, this new paradigm to really kind of sink into you. And there's really nothing that you even need to do. You know, like I said, with the Ace of Swords paired with the Ten of Cups, it's like there is, there's a, a new idea, a new way of being that has something to do with family or relationships or even community and networking, you know, the people that you surround yourself with. That's very interesting. Also, too, like, let's just take a look at how the Ten of Cups has the this stack of, of glasses here in the middle. The Ace of Swords, right? We have the sword that kind of turns into a feather, but, you know, it's, it's horizontal. No, vertical. <laughs> just a vertical line, right? And then even on the Emperor card, it's just, it's a vertical line. And it's just, it's kind of like that thing of um, the, the closest distance between two different points is a straight line. I don't know. I don't know if that has 
any meaning, <laughs> but it is really kind of interesting. You know, like instead of trying to go like around a thing or, you know, tiptoeing around or, or even like feeling like walking on eggshells is coming to mind. It's like going straight towards maybe there's even something that this is just, of course, like metaphorical, you know, but it's like something that seemed to have a lot of curves is starting to like straighten out. And maybe again, like that is just your perspective on something that, you know, maybe it was blurred or just not very clear. And it's it's starting to get clear. I don't know. That's just really kind of interesting. The Emperor card is fire. It's a card of Aries. Uh, so there can be an Aries. There doesn't have to be. I'm just pointing that out. But um, I don't even know if I just said it's like associated to Mars. Mars is in Cancer right now. That could have some significance depending on wherever Cancer is in your chart. But the Emperor is like the divine masculine, right? I mean, it can be a masculine figure in your life, like an authority figure, you know, a parent, uh, a grandparent, a guardian, somebody that had significant something in your life. It doesn't have to be, again, just pointing that out. Um, it could be you, you know, because the emperor is confident, sure of themselves. There's also kind of a very like law and order type of vibe to them. And when we think divine masculine, it's not the gender, it's the energy. So, you know, we think of like hunting and gathering and, you know, kind of like initiating and giving, you know, it's like manual labor type of thing, like really kind of like putting your energy and your body into a thing. And, you know, I mean, we have a brain here, <laughs> right? And, you know, we were talking about with swords being about our mind space. So it is interesting that the emperor has this depiction of a brain on it uh, with a tree growing out of it. Because, again, you know, even the Druid card was talking about roots growing and, and all of that. Like the tree language, too. That's kind of interesting. Because, again, it's like there there's some level of understanding that's like kind of unfolding here this could even be like whatever this idea is is really kind of starting to take roots in your mind you know like really kind of starting to connect some dots and especially with the six of cups because the six of cups is the card of the past it could be inner child if you've been doing um, a lot of like inner child work it's also you know like nostalgia it's like thinking back to like the good old days you know when was a time in my life that I, I felt like I had this Ten of Cups vibe, whether that was with other people or whether that was just, you know, like within me and I was satisfied with everything that was kind of around me, even if it was for, you know, like a split second. But it's 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 expanding on that with this Emperor card. I believe the Hanged Man is also water. So I just, I find it interesting that we have three water, four water cards. We technically have two fire cards and one air card. I do always find it interesting though, like when a reading is just kind of strongly more towards like one element, you know, and with this being more cups and it, it is more on an emotional level, which is also kind of why, you know, I'm sure that this Druid card came out because, you know, when there is like this shift, this paradigm shift going on, especially with the way that you feel about your past or you feel about the people that had an impact on your past and when there are dots being connected in the brain right like I was saying with the ego you know it's like going through like the the stories that we attached to those experiences that I was talking about and, you know, when we become adults we can review those stories and say I can understand, you know, like say to ourselves, right, our inner child, I can understand why and how that story came to be 
But, you know, having the experience and the understanding that I have now, this is now my understanding of it. And this is my understanding of my placement in that story. And you can, you know, kind of fill that story with a ton of compassion, a ton of grace, a ton of love. Even, you know, for the people that were also involved potentially in that story, you know, at least that was my experience with inner child work, you know, like just kind of following the breadcrumbs back. Like, how did this become part of my personality or my identity, my character, you know, and sitting in that feeling what that is and that takes time but then also it's like who am I today and do I does that story most times it doesn't and you are in control now with the emperor card and you can control the narrative of whatever the six of cups is that's like you know that really really deep healing stuff you know like <laughs> that is the stuff that will change your perspective and it does take time because you know like you're we're talking things that have been part of of who we are for a very long time so you know shifting those things also takes a bit of time and awareness and attention like i said you know compassion and grace and all of that. So, and speaking of, we have, <laughs> I wasn't, <laughs> I wasn't even paying attention to like what was next. I'm like literally looking over here. I mean, I knew that the hanged man was out here, but I wasn't like really paying attention to how it actually fit and how effing perfect because, you know, the hanged man is depicted by a cocoon and, you know, like kind of this like universe looking space um, stuff in the center i mean of course just you know that connection to the universe right i mean we all are an element some element of the universe just you know being expressed in different ways but you know just the the cocoon aspect of you know turning to goo right like metamorphizing from a caterpillar you know you already made that decision to no longer be the caterpillar right you made this cocoon or you will be or the energy is available for you to do this if you so choose but you know like when they are in a co in the cocoon they turn to goo right and then they totally restructure themselves into becoming a butterfly so that's like what, that's exactly what we were talking about. You know, there's something shifting here. And, and not only is it shifting, but it's like, it's changing something significant in you. And it doesn't even necessarily have to be that you're, you're going to start, you know, like expressing yourself different. I mean, you can, cause then I just started thinking like, you know, a, cat a, a, a butterfly looks completely different than, you know, a caterpillar. So maybe you are going to change, you know, the way that you dress or the way that you do your hair or the way that if you wear makeup, the way that you do that, you know, like it can be an external change like that. But also it's like, you know, things are changing internally and that does affect how you interact with people, how you interact with your life, you know, like how you view opportunities or even approach that third line, you know. I also love how it's nighttime in the hanged man and then in the nine of cups. I mean, you know, I'm sure that the sun is probably going down in the, the nine of cups, but for me, since these two are paired together, it's coming up. And like I said, you know, the Ten of Cups is a minor arcana card to the sun. And we have the sun on the Nine of Cups. <laughs> the Nine of Cups. Okay, first of all, I love that both of these cards came out. If the sun card would have come out also, I would have probably died. 
So I'm glad to still be alive. <laughs> but the nine of cups, it, like nines are when we experience the energy within ourselves. You know, like the nine of cups is wish fulfillment. This is, you know, having your needs met. This is maybe even you meeting your needs, right? It's self-care, self-love. It's understanding that you have to give the same love to yourself that you want to give to other people. And I also love how these came out, you know, the Ten of Cups came out first. Because like I said, there's definitely, there's some shift happening with how you view the Ten of Cups. And there is going to be some level of satisfaction with the, the Nine of Cups at the end. Whatever this process is for you, however it goes for you at the end of it, there is going to be a level of satisfaction that you feel about yourself, about the process, about like your place in life. And then we have the Three of Wands at the bottom of the deck. And it's like as, as soon as you get through this process and there's no rush. Like I said, there's nothing even in here that's saying that there is any fast movement that's going to be happening. Even the hanged man talks about suspension and delay, you know? It's also seeing things from a different perspective. So again, right, and it's paired with the nine of cups. So this could even be viewing yourself differently. It has everything to do with how you feel about you and that has everything to do with how you feel about other people how you feel about life how you feel about your relationships and then the three of wands we have this portal here i love and also you know the same type of colors and stuff in in the sky as with the hanged man so i feel like there's there's some type of connection there but it's like, this is when, and you'll recognize this in your life. This is when you start moving forward. It's like when this window appears, right? Like that's when you know it's time to move forward. Because that's what the Three of Wands is all about. It's about taking actionable steps forward. And the Two of Wands, you were making plans, seeing what options were available. And the Three of Wands, it's actually doing that and it does take like a level of like courage and bravery to step through this portal because it's not like you can even see what's really on the other side of it you just really kind of have to trust and like i said we have the chariot at the bottom or behind the three of wands and you'll know when it's time to to go through this portal because that's kind of like what the chariot is. A chariot is going to take you exactly where you need to go, which is also what the Druid card was talking about. There's, you know, like this intuitive thing about it because, you know, the salmon is uh, jumping up, you know, on this waterfall. It could be even something going against the grain, right? Because it's probably counterintuitive for, for a fish to swim towards a waterfall <laughs> when the current is like literally going against them but they do that to lay eggs right i'm pretty sure so again right even this portal it's like it may feel counterintuitive to walk through this portal or to go against the current but they're you know if you are being guided to do so the four of pentacles is about holding on you know <laughs> discipline too maybe even like some budgeting if it has something to do with like work or your money but this is also you know like there's a message with the four of pentacles that um you if you are holding on too tight it's like you're missing opportunities so it's you know like releasing your grip a bit we have the Ace of Wands behind that. You know, there's this matchstick here. It's that spark. Something sparks your interest. It's, you know, a passion or creative project or, you know, like just something that kind of starts that fire up under you. 
And maybe that's what will kind of kick you out of the Four of Pentacles mode too. We have the the King of Cups, the King of Wands. Also interesting because, you know, we have all these cups out here. And then we have the, the King of Cups, which is the highest expression of the suit. Same with the King of Wands. So it's like your, your actions meet your um, emotions, you know, which is also lovely. Beautiful. I'm going to leave it there. And actually, before we go, I'm trying to get better at this like self plug thing. Um, <laughs> but if you are still here, thank you so much for making it this far. I really appreciate it. And if you haven't done so already, I would love if you liked the video, leave a comment. Even if you dislike the video, honestly, whatever is true for you, it's engagement. I appreciate it. Um, subscribe to the channel. I think I'm like three subscribers away from 700. <laughs> and I swear, like anytime I get to like a milestone number like that, it takes forever. Like on Etsy, um, I just last week, maybe I can't remember. Maybe it was a week before. Anyway. I was so close to 500 subscribers, or excuse me, 500 um, sales. And then it like, I didn't have a single sale for like a whole week. <laughs> so it's like, <laughs> so it's like, you know, as soon as I'm like really close to like a milestone like that, it just, everything just stops. So, <laughs> um, Anyway, that's funny. But yeah, you know, I, I would love it if you subscribe to the channel because my intention is to build this beautiful community because that would be wish fulfillment for me. So uh, anyway, is that everything? I think so. I'll leave it there. Thank you again so much for allowing me to read your cards. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.